Welcome to Bluegrass. We are so glad you could be with us for worship today. If you would, jump over to the chat section and let us know who you are and who's watching with you. If at any point you have a prayer request, you can click on the live prayer button and one of our staff will be there to pray with you. You can also email prayer requests to office at bluegrassumc.org. Now, let's get started. Let's lift our hearts together. Let's lift our voices together as we sing praise to the Lamb. Oh, let the Son of God enfold you with His Spirit and His love. Let Him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let Him have the things that hold you and His Spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make you whole. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your land. continue worship there's nothing worth more that will ever come close no thing can compare you're our living hope your presence I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is under in your presence Lord. Holy Spirit you are well Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence. nothing worth more 
If you would, please join me in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much that we have the opportunity to gather together in worship, in celebration of you, of who you are, of what you have done, of what you are doing in the world today. We continue to thank you, Lord, that you invite us to draw near. You invite us to these moments, these times when we can share our hearts and our minds and know, Lord, that you listen, you hear, and you act. You are our loving God. You are our mighty Savior. And we, Lord, we are yours. Today we give you what's on our hearts, our cares and concerns, our, our joys and our celebrations. We give all of it to you. We know that we come to you, Lord, from a variety of places right now, a variety of, of emotional experiences. And we ask, Lord, that you would take all of it and that in all of it, you would be glorified. You would be celebrated. You would be worshiped for who you are. We know there are some today, Lord, who are grieving. We know there are some today who are uncertain. We know there are some today who are, who are celebrating and who are celebrating a little bit differently than they thought they were going to be at this time of year. And so, Lord, we give all of that to you. We give all of it to you. And we ask, Lord, that in our uncertainty, our doubt, our grief, in our celebrations, in, in our joys, you would meet us there. And, Lord, that we would rest and enjoy your presence. We love you, we thank you, we praise you that we are yours and you are our God. It is in Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Welcome to worship on this Pentecost weekend. We're so glad that you're here to join us. If you've been with us over the past several weeks, you know we've been talking about getting real, how God invites us to come and share our deepest feelings with Him. It's for a greater purpose, so that we'll trust in Him, that we'll surrender to Him. But where do we go from there? And that's what we want to talk about today and the weeks ahead as we begin this new sermon series on Forward. So what has God been speaking into your lives over the past several weeks and months? Do you feel like maybe you are moving forward spiritually, relationally, emotionally? Or do you still feel a, bu a bit frustrated and anxious about everything that's going on in our lives and in our world? You know, I've been encouraged to hear some of the valuable lessons that many are learning as they are going forward in a healthy way. Some are reading the Bible and, and praying more and drawing closer to Christ. Some are learning a better pace for life. Some are enjoying a, a simpler lifestyle. Some are more grateful for what they have rather than focusing on what they don't have. Some are experiencing a deeper connection with family members. And, and some are saying, you know, I don't want to miss out on what I've learned and gained and I want to take this with me into the future to whatever is next. I wonder, could this be a time in history that is a burning bush moment for all of us? Is God attempting to get our attention to encourage us to have a holier life, a healthier life? Well, today we are going to look at that famous burning bush story. But first, we do want to recognize today's holy day, today's holiday. It's actually an important birthday, Pentecost, the very birth of the church. You know, I put this Christian holiday second right behind Easter. In the American church, we like to celebrate Christmas, and it seems like that's celebrated with more enthusiasm than Easter and Pentecost put together. And maybe that's part of the problem with the American church, that we enjoy celebrating Christ's birth more than we desire in attaining and experiencing the ultimate gift of Christ's birth, which is the Holy Spirit of Christ Himself, who was poured out on all believers on Pentecost. So, before we get to the burning bush, let's remind ourselves of the Pentecost story found in Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Then jumping down to verse 12, we read this. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? What a great question. What does this mean? In other words, tell us more. Explain to us what's happening here. And the Apostle Peter didn't waste any time. It was his eternal moment that God had been preparing him for, God had been calling him for on the day of Pentecost to stand up and to preach the truth of the gospel. And what a sermon it was that ignited the birth of the church. Now we're going to come back to the end result of this sermon in just a moment. But let's move on to another experience of fire of another person at 80 years of age, a young 80, and what he experienced. And we read that in Exodus chapter 3. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. 
We know that Moses was supernaturally saved as a three-month-old, that he was brought up in Pharaoh's palace, that he defended a fellow Israelite by killing an Egyptian. Then he had to flee to the wilderness where he became a shepherd for Jethro and married his daughter Zipporah. For 40 years, Moses was in the wilderness dutifully doing the task of tending his father-in-law's sheep. As a prince, he grew up in the palace of prestige and power. But now his life as a shepherd caused him to become small and insignificant. Whatever dreams he had as a young man surely dried up in the desert. Is that you? Does that sound like you? Have you had a falling out with life? Have you been in the wilderness longer than you'd like to admit? Do you feel forgotten? unappreciated, uncertain, underemployed, or simply lost? Well, guess what? You're in good company. However, your story and Moses' story doesn't stop there. Did you hear the scripture mention that Moses was on the far side of the wilderness? I mean, if the wilderness wasn't bad enough place to be, he was as deep in the wilderness as he could be. If anyone was looking to award him the publisher clearinghouse sweepstakes, he sure made it hard for them to find him. But God did. God found him. And David, David was another one who hid often in the wilderness, and he wrote these words in Psalm 139. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Scripture reminds us over and over that God is always with us, that God never forgets us no matter what we've done, no matter how hard we try to hide ourselves or how long we've been in the wilderness. God knows where we are. God will find us. So Moses' life teaches us that whether we're retired or whether we've just graduated and we're kind of concerned about our future options, please know this, that your kingdom prime, what God has in store for you, is full of possibilities. And so this is a season to be wildly open to God and what God wants to do in your life because you're not finished, you're not forgotten. God knows where you are. And God has a plan for your life. And so today I want to declare to you, God has his eye on you. And I'll even go one step further and say that God wants to give you a holy fire just as he did Moses and just as he did those disciples on Pentecost. Well, Moses' attention was drawn to that burning bush that would not consume itself. The God who rules over trillions of galaxies, the God who created more stars than the number of the grains of sand upon this planet. This is the same God who was looking and found that seemingly insignificant shepherd hiding out in the desert. And God's holy presence was made dramatically known to Moses. And so Moses drew near. And as he drew near, God spoke from within the bush and called Moses by name. You see, God isn't only the Lord of the mighty and the magnificent, but also of the hidden and the humble. God knows your name. God does know the number of hairs on your head and the number of tattoos on your body, even if they're hidden. God knows the whereabouts of a single sparrow at any time around the globe. God knows the most intimate details about creation. Such knowledge shouts to us that we are valued, that we are loved, that God knows where we are. So what do we do with all of this? Well, the same as Moses did. He replied when God spoke to him, called him by name, here am I. In other words, I'm available. I'm listening. I'm ready for you, God. Now, God went on and, and warned Moses, don't come any closer. He was prevented from rashly 
rushing into God's presence for when you get too close to the holy fire, you can be consumed. So God was warning him. Instead, he was told to take off his shoes because he was standing on holy ground. In other words, recognize where you're standing in the presence of God is no ordinary place. Holy fire ground is set apart for the glory of God. That's where the presence of God is made known. And it's there that we discover God is separate and distinct from all creation. He is high and holy. He is sovereign and supreme. He is above all and over all. There is no one like our God. So whenever and wherever God is present, the ordinary is transformed into extraordinary. The mundane becomes the miraculous. Common ground becomes holy ground. Moses didn't know it yet, but one day in the near future, he would come back to this very spot where he would receive the Ten Commandments and the people would worship God. Have you had such a holy ground, burning bush experience? Maybe it was when you came to faith in Christ Jesus you had that kind of experience. Or maybe God placed a call upon your life. Or maybe there was just a special time in your life where you sensed the special presence of God at work within you. One of our church family members who recently passed away shared her experience. She said she was 12 years old when she went to church camp. And it was there that she had that kind of burning bush experience. And so I, I asked her, was it at one of the worship services at camp? And she said it was actually as she was walking the grounds of the camp between activities. She just sensed the presence of Christ upon her. She sensed something different was happening and, and there was a fire within her that, that began to burn. And so she told some of the counselors about what was going on and they prayed with her and, and she received Christ. She welcomed Christ into her life. It was a life-changing, Holy Spirit invading moment that she never forgot. What's your story? How is God getting your attention? How is God grabbing a hold of your heart? For Moses... God continued to reveal who he was in verse 6. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The one true God, the Lord of creation, the one who was the God of Abraham now has appeared and is the God of Moses as well. God came to Moses and said, I've heard the cries of my people who are in misery and I have come to rescue them. And Moses, I'm going to use you as my instrument to do so. Well, if we're like Moses, we understand the trepidation that that would have brought to us. And so in verses 11 to 15, we read his response. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Now the meaning of the name I am has been debated for centuries of what it really means. As God had already mentioned and mentioned again, He was not a different God who had appeared previously to the Israelites. Same God. And so the God of Moses is the God of Abraham. He also, though, gave Moses a new name. Not only I am, but also Lord. All capital letters, Lord. Whenever you see that in Scripture, you know that it's referring to Yahweh. The name of God, the one true name of God. 
In fact, Yahweh sounds like and may be yet another description of I am. So in revealing his name as I am and Yahweh, God was saying about himself to Moses something like this that I found. I am truly he who exists and who will be dynamically present then and there in the situation to which I'm sending you. Let's look at that one more time. I am truly he who exists and who will be dynamically present then and there in the situation to which I'm sending you. Doesn't that kind of sound familiar and similar to a promise that Jesus made to his disciples when he called them to go and make disciples? At the end of that, he said, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. In other words, I will be dynamically present with you. How would Jesus do so if he was going to ascend to heaven? Well, of course, by the Holy Spirit who was poured out at Pentecost. The very reason Christ's Spirit came was to be with them, to be with us forever, to empower us. So that brings us right back to the Pentecost story. After preaching that power-packed Holy Spirit sermon, Peter was asked this in verses 37 to 39. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Did you hear? Peter included us in that. For all who are far off are included in this promise. We live in the age of the Holy Spirit who's being poured out over the whole world on all flesh, women and men giving visions to the young and dreams to the old. No one is left out. No one is forgotten. It's for everyone who will draw near to the holy fire of God and take their shoes off. In other words, it's for all who humble themselves and repent, who turn from their own pursuits and turn to God's holy pursuit of their lives. The promise is they'll be forgiven and they'll receive the powerful I Am presence of the Holy Spirit. Now here's the amazing thing that I don't want you to miss. On Pentecost, the disciples themselves became burning bushes for the world to see. Please listen, we we don't have to look for a burning bush because we are the burning bushes if we have the I Am Holy Spirit fire burning brightly within us. So let me encourage you, take off your shoes because you're standing on holy ground. You are that holy ground. Repent. Turn away from yourself. Turn away from your sin. And turn wholeheartedly to God. Believe in Christ Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Receive God's forgiveness and the promised gift of holy fire and be the burning bush that draws others near to experience the life-changing grace, the Holy Spirit invading power of God for your life. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we come before you and we want this power. We want this experience for our lives and so we repent. We turn away from ourselves and we turn to you. We state today that we believe in you as Savior and Lord, as Yahweh. You are the one true God. And so we put our full faith in you. And today we declare, Holy Spirit, come. Come afresh upon us. Come and do a new work within us. Don't let us dry up, but set us on fire so that we can be the burning bushes that will burn brightly for others to see and to others to know that you are the one true God, the one true Lord for all to know, for all to believe in, for their eternal hope. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue to worship with this song.
Thanks so much for worshiping with us. We're glad to have you a part of our congregation as we worship together. Thanks to the Bluegrass Congregation for your prayers, for your faithful support, for your giving as we continue to seek and reach our world for Jesus Christ. You know, it's exciting to see all the places where people are worshiping with us. Even last week, someone was worshiping with us from China. And so we're excited about the larger reach that we continue to have. May we continue to recognize that we're the Holy Spirit burning bushes that will draw others to faith in Christ Jesus. May that be our prayer that we will be burning for Christ Jesus and others will be drawn in. So I pray today that you'll know how much you are loved by God, how much you are graced by Jesus Christ, and how much you are empowered and invaded by the Holy Spirit to light up the world for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen.